Thanks, Guy. Well, he actually just recently got a new title. He's uh, the president, presidential special coordinator for energy security, working very closely with the president on all these energy concerns. Because even though the president is here really to discuss foreign policy, it's those inflationary concerns, gasoline prices at home, that are really starting to dominate those conversations, not just amongst the president, but also amongst the uh, foreign leaders he is meeting with. So we're joined by Amos Hoxstein. Also, the Washington Post has recently called him President Biden's energy whisperer. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Emery. So you're one of these key architects of this price cap idea, and the G7 has now endorsed it. But can you give us a little more information? What is the timeline for it, and what kind of cap price would we actually be looking at in the market? Well, the G7 leaders have been discussing this for the last several weeks uh, um, and came to an agreement during the G7 agreement yesterday. Um, that we are going to endorse the concept of a price cap because we want to shift from taking barrel Russian barrels off the market to pricing them in a, in a manner that President Putin would not benefit from the revenues. So instead of restricting barrels, we want to restrict revenues. So the major achievement was that the G7 leaders have agreed that this will be the concept. That means that the market knows that there's not going to be a decline in uh, volumes on the market. So as we go towards the end of the year, if there were concerns that the EU ban and the EU um, ban on insurance would lead to less oil on the market, we're moving that conversation to saying, how do we keep that volume on the market or restrict the right. revenues uh, to Putin? Right, because he made $20 billion just last month. But we know he's already some, getting some deep discounts, selling to India for as low as $35. So what kind of price cap range are you looking at? So we don't know how much money he's making because the $20 billion number that you just gave is, an, is basically a mathematics of how many barrels he's exporting uh, times the price of Brent. Uh, but as you just said, he is actually already receiving and being forced into steep discounts. Mm -hmm. So the price cap mechanism is there to keep prices lower, Russian prices lower, which will ultimately um, maintain enough supply on the market and could put, start putting downward pressure on oil prices because the only part of the market that will be affected is the revenues to Putin. So clearly we have to figure out what the price, what the appropriate price would be uh, and that will be decided among uh, G7 leaders as well as the other countries that we are now talking to. So right now an idea, we're waiting for more details. I want to look ahead to the president's trip in Saudi Arabia because Emmanuel Macron at the G7 said that he had heard through Mohammed bin Zayed that potentially the Saudis can only go for 150,000 barrels a day. Is that a, your assessment? How much would you like to see the Saudis produce? Slow increments or go full throttle? Well, we have direct conversations with all members of OPEC and countries around the world, both producers and consumers. Uh, and so we, we base our evaluations on our conversations with them directly and consult uh, with, the, uh, with everyone in the market. Uh, it's not for me to say how much they have. Uh, that's really for them uh, to discuss. But would you like to see increases incremental or one big swing? Well, we'd like to see uh, all producers around the world recognize that we are at a time of war that this is a different kind of period in the market, and that therefore we need to make sure that there are sufficient supplies uh, for the market during this time uh, of tremendous conflict uh, after Putin's invasion. Are you convinced that Riyadh will adhere to that call after the president makes this visit? Well, we're very, uh, we, were, we welcomed uh, OPEC Plus making a major change in their attitude after, after all the months of preparation, of amassing troops uh, on the border of Ukraine, and then the invasion, and even all the months after the invasion uh, and the atrocities, uh, there was still a notion at OPEC Plus that there was no need for additional supplies. So we welcome that there was a sharp uh, turnaround on that policy where they announced just a few weeks ago that they believe that because of the war, more supplies need to be on the market. They increased the announcement mm -hmm. increase the supply that will only start next week or at the right. end of this Right, and they're week. meeting today. And they're meeting today to, I assume, reaffirm that. Uh, so we, we're seeing them already putting on more supplies, and I hope that they continue this um, this posture of the market needs more supplies. Well, what about uh, OPEC shooting all its spare capacities, bullets too early? Are you worried about that? Because then the market would just look at all the producers around the world and say, what's left in the tank? 
Well, I think that we should be careful not to uh, make judgments on about how much spare capacity there is in each country. They they regard that ten, they tend to regard that as as a rather. But there's really only two. There are only a very small number of countries in OPEC that can produce. We're in discussions with them. I think that the first step of them announcing additional supplies uh, a few weeks ago uh, was step one. Uh, I'm very hopeful that you and I can have this conversation about step two uh, sometime in the near future. In Jeddah, I hope. Um, I want to also ask you about SPR releases. Do you think that the, well, the White House thinks that potentially there will be a need for that after October? Well, what we've announced is that we don't only talk to suppliers around the world. We first and foremost talk to suppliers in the United States. And we've had, held a lot of conversations in depth with the producers in the United States. Uh, we've encouraged them to increase supplies. In that conversation, we were they informed us of their plans for capex increases and for increased production, which led us to believe that somewhere in the 800,000 to a million barrels would be increased for this year, and that that would come towards the end of the year. We stepped in, President Biden stepped in to make sure that the U.S. market was well supplied. We made sure we had a million barrels a day uh, between May and the end of the year, when the private sector will add those supplies. So at the moment, nothing beyond October. So we believe that that's what the market needs at the moment. We can see in October we can reassess, but I believe that that's where we are at the moment. We're confident that that's right. Um, well, just finally, I mentioned at the beginning the Washington Post recently had called you Biden's energy whisperer. What President Biden is doing right now, going to the kingdom, a lot of this outreach is driven by higher gasoline prices in America. You recently called for suspension of the tax, but Congress has dismissed a lot of that. Why waste that energy on that? Well, first, the president is going to the Middle East, he's going to go to Israel, and then he's going to go to Saudi Arabia, and we're going to discuss a range of issues, strategic issues in the region with Saudi Arabia, with the, with the GCC. Energy security clearly is one of the most important issues around the world. He's having those conversations with, almost as you said, every leader mm -hmm. um, in the world, and clearly we'll have those conversations there, but it's going to be part of a broad conversation about, reach, about strategic issues and regional issues. When it comes to the tax, like, look, at the end of the day, the president wants to do, understands one thing. We, he is, I can't tell you, he is very focused on reducing prices for the American consumers. And knowing that we are going into, and we're already the beginning of the driving season in the United States of higher demand, mm -hmm. he wants to see what we can do to reduce the price, even if it's that 18 to 50 cents between the federal and the states. If we can get 50 cents off for consumers, I think he thinks that's a little bit of breathing room, and that's worth the effort. He is willing to work with, he's open to working with Congress. He said he's calling on them to do it. He's going to continue to work with them to see if we can get that achieved. I don't think that's a waste of, of any uh, of any effort. On the contrary, I think for if you told the president that he can get 50 cents off for American consumers during this summer, I think he would uh, he would welcome that, and I think every American family across the country will. 